For the 198th time, Euro-Asian Bob strikes again. This thing is beautiful. Let's get started. So, Wizard, do you feel like you're back in middle school? I remember seeing these back in middle school, these Cutlass Sierras, Cutlass Supremes all over the place. And by the way, this is a 1991 Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme, obviously convertible. You really don't see these much anymore, and I really love the styling of these. I wish I could get one that's in this nice a condition. I'm not much of a convertible fan, otherwise I probably might have bought this from him. This thing only has 40,000 miles on it. As far as miles goes, it just exceeded its factory warranty. Obviously by years, it has far exceeded the factory warranty. In fact, if you brought this to a dealership today, they would say, turn around, bro. Hell no, we're not working on that. These young guys today, they don't want to work on these old cars. It makes us feel old, Mrs. Wizard. Speak for yourself, sir. Okay, I'll, I'll speak for myself then. This one's just here for a few small items, which actually Grimes has already repaired. We're going to show you what we found and what we did to fix those. But first, let's take in the beauty of this thing. It is so nice. Here is the really sweet front end of this Cutlass Supreme. And although it looks really nice, my favorite year option is 92 and 3 and newer, where they had four individual, looks like squinted headlights. These are still the old composite headlights. But it is very nice nonetheless. Go around to the side, we can see the paint is in really good shape. The wheels, it's got really nice stock wheels. Those things look amazing, they're like blades. They made coupe, convertible, and sedan as options. This is the W Body GM10 platform, shared with the Pontiac Grand Prix, the Buick Regal, and the Chevy Lumina. This is my favorite part of these Cutlass Supremes. It's just got a really nice squared off rear end. It just looks real nice. The whole car is nice. You're going to hear me say that a thousand times today, the word nice. Take a shot every time I say the word nice. As we go down this side, you can see it is equally nice on this side. They made these from 88 to 97. Let's hop under the hood. Here is our 3.1 60 degree V6. As we look around, you can see that the engine bay is nice and clean. You could have gotten a 2.3 liter quad four, a 2.8 V6, a 3.1 V6, which this one has, or a 3.4 V6, depending on the year. This one has 140 horsepower and 185 pound-feet of torque. This one came in with slight hesitation off idle and a little bit of stumble at idle, and Grimes was able to really check that out and find out what it was, and it was this guy. Our idle air control motor was just clogged up with carbon. It was kind of dirty. He got it cleaned up and cleaned the mating surfaces and it idles smooth and the stumble is gone. It runs smooth now. These are common for intake leaks, especially under 3.4s and the 3.1s. Where you can see right here, the intake is split right here with the head where the valve cover sits not just on the head, but it also bolts into the intake manifold. Some of those areas are some common leaks, and they're not too hard to fix. They're just kind of pesky, kind of annoying. But this one's not having that issue, luckily. The second thing that was an issue was a small coolant leak right here. This little paper gasket's actually a little port right off the water pump. It was leaking. We got a new gasket on there and took care of that issue. Otherwise, this thing runs and drives great. It really doesn't need much more than that. Before we get to the last issue of why it was here, let's let Mrs. Wizard show you guys around the interior. It is really sweet. Okay, ladies and gents, look at that sea of black. Let's turn the key on. Don't you love that? That is just perfect from that, that late 80s, early 90s. Everything has to glow. It's absolutely beautiful. And we see it does have 40,252 miles. Hardly anything. But we have one control over there on the left-hand side, which is our convertible top. Look at this dash, ladies and gents. This thing is in perfect shape. Garage princess for sure. I love the Oldsmobile embossed on the glove box holder. Let's go ahead and pop it open. And you'll see like nothing's ever been in there. It's in such amazing shape. And I'm guessing these are very thin, very tiny little 
cup holders? I don't know, did they steal this idea from Volvo from the 80s? The, they are not the best at holding your beverage in place though, but they do look brand new. As we move down, you'll see that we have some nice carpeting on our knee bolster with some vents as well. As we move to our center area, we'll see that we have a lovely Delco Lock 2 radio. As we move down again, more controls, and I'll turn it on for just a second. But again, that do show up is LCD. I'm going to turn it off so we don't have that fan blowing in your ears. Move down, got a dummy plate, cigarette lighter, charging port to to in today's standard. Nice little hidey hole there. Again, perfectly clean. Not even look like a pin has ever been in there. As we look at our gear selector, very simple. But in, look how much distance from here all the way down to first gear. Pretty impressive. We have a nice little change holder. And I'm wondering if this might have been replaceable to be something else as well, because it just easily just slides out. It's amazing it never got lost in all these years. As we look at our tiny, tiny little armrest, you can see nice little slots for cassette tapes and some other doodads that have never held anything because this thing has, well, she's just perfect. Yes, that looks like a sofa. And let me tell you, it feels like a sofa. This thing is so comfortable. And this red leather is in pristine shape. Look at the stitching. Look at the perforations. Everything is in just immaculate condition. It does have a very impressive bar here to move. So underneath you can adjust your seat. Quite impressive. As we look at our door card, we've got some nice fluting going on on some of our stitching there. Again, lots more maroon leather and vinyl and carpet. And you can see that the seat belt is attached and is attached to the roll bar as well. Back seat, I don't think anybody's ever sat back there. It looks amazing. Isn't this perfect? Look at this. Have you ever seen a back seat look so nice in a car at this age? Perfect condition. Great lighting since the top's down, but we've got a lovely speaker box over there. Of course, an ashtray and a little window control for that little corner window as well. The top is down, but if we were to able to look down there, we can see, maybe you guys can see down there, underneath all that fabric is an actual glass window for our soft top. Being that this is the early 90s, this was the time where we decided to put buttons on our steering wheel. And so we have buttons for everything under the sun uh, on here. Don't have an airbag underneath here yet. Not quite to that point, but we also have a few spots to hit the horn, I guess. But tons of controls to, you know, do something up there in that big black abyss of a gauge cluster. So enough of this interior talk. I'm really curious um, what that third problem was. I hear it was pretty annoying. The third problem that Eurasian Bob had with this since he bought it is the horn did not work. And this is one of those scenarios where there's a lot of hidden things in an older car that you, you're not aware of the story, you're not told the full story until you actually purchase the car and start taking it apart. Grimes actually diagnosed it. He checked fuses, power, ground, relays, the actual horn itself, all kinds of things. And he's scratching his head. He was like, I don't understand why it doesn't work. Finally, he had a hunch. He said, I'm just going to take apart the steering wheel and see what's going on. Let's take a look at the steering wheel. So there are three horn pads on this steering wheel. There's the center and the outsides. It's kind of annoying. And when Grimes is actually testing this, we were all saying, okay, that's enough. That's enough honking. It was getting kind of annoying, but he did get it fixed. When he took this apart, he found actually that the horn was disconnected on the actual clock spring kind of a thing, the little button that's inside of there. It was just disconnected because these two outer horn pads, the only thing that separates the contacts, even from the factory, was foam. Just this soft, squishy foam. There's a metal plate and a metal plate in between this foam, and when you would push it, it makes contact. And the foam had disintegrated over the years and completely collapsed to where the contacts were touching non-stop. So at some point, the previous owner had a non-stop horn honking and they finally paid someone to probably to just unhook it. Well, if you look at this picture here, you can actually see what they look like. And also here's another picture. Grimes was able to disassemble the contacts, clean everything up and cut out his own little pieces of foam sandwich it back together, reassemble it, and just like you saw, they work beautiful now. So that problem is totally fixed. All three problems 
have been solved. Now let's get this thing on the lift and take a look underneath. Let's take a look underneath. We can see here at the core support, there's nothing going on as far as leaks. The fans are in good shape. They spin nice and easy and they come on. You can see it's had probably a starter replacement in its lifetime. As you come down to the oil pan, you can see it's nice and dry there. And the transmission pan is also not dripping anything out of it. Everything looks nice and dry. Check out these brakes. They're about 80% remaining. CV boots are good. Nothing loose there. Brakes are good. CV boots are good. This doesn't have sway bar links. There's actually just a bushing straight onto the sway bar itself. So that makes things less complicated. Everything looks good there. We come down to our exhaust. Obviously there's no drive shaft here. It's front wheel drive with the 4T60 transmission. Here's our catalytic converter, still doing its job. Look at this guys, no rust bubbles, no rust, no cancer rust, just dirt, that's surface dirt right there. Everything's in such good shape. Here's our fuel tank, it's not rusted out either. Here's our fuel filter, come back to the back. You can see it has one big leaf spring, just like a Corvette, a fiberglass leaf spring, that is not metal fiberglass. Our strut is in good shape. Our sway bar is in good shape. Go check this side. Brakes on both sides are also 80% remaining. Struts are good. Everything's looking pretty good on here. That's the tiniest little sway bar I've ever seen, Mrs. Wizard. It is awfully cute. And here's where our spare tire would go, full size probably. I don't know if it is or not, but it looks pretty big. Uh, let's go ahead and check the tires that are actually on it. That reminds me. Here we can see 35th week of 2023, so they're fairly new tires if you purchase this vehicle. Let's get this thing on the ground. So like you've just seen, this thing is in very good shape. The link in the description will actually take you to Eurasian Bob's site. You can actually contact him if you want to purchase this. If you got 2,500 bucks, you think, hey, I can make him an offer on this, don't even bother. He's not gonna take that low of a payment. Also, he doesn't want your broken dirt bikes that are currently apart in boxes. Oh, the wizard, I was gonna offer those to him. No, and he also doesn't want your broken PlayStation in trade. He's not, <laughs> don't even try that stuff, it's not gonna work. We always enjoy doing these videos for Euro Asian Bob. He brings stuff in here that I haven't seen in years, I haven't even thought of in years, and it's just like, core memory unlocked type thing. It's like, wow, I remember these now. I hadn't even thought of those in over 20 years. That's, so, here? That's like 30 years. 30 years, yeah. Well, I seen them on the road 20 years ago. Maybe. The convertible top on this does work perfectly. It's currently down, but there's no issues with that either. So again, if you're curious, contact your Asian Bob if you have any other questions. Everything is fixed. It's actually getting ready to get delivered back to him and it will be for sale. If you're curious what kind of tools Grimes used to work on this, check our Amazon affiliates link in the description below. If you purchase anything, we get a small cut and we really appreciate it. Check out Mrs. Wizard's Way. She's got videos coming out pretty soon on there as well. All kinds of good content on her channel. And make sure to hit the subscribe button here because there's so many more videos to come. Thanks for watching. Thank you.